Thank you. So the idea of the national urban mobility policies and programs is basically just one way of uh, uh, capturing the idea of synchronizing uh, policies across the national level, but also across the national and local level. Um, so this is one approach that one could take. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter if you call it an NUMP or if you call it a national policy or strategy. It's just the basic idea of the synchronization of key policies to make sure that they are uh, complementary and uh, work well together to enable the transition. So we're touching uh, briefly on the key concept, on the role of NUMPs and some of the key components, then going to the actors and the NUMP cycle, just again as, a, as an idea to, um, to develop such a program. Um, uh, then look, reflecting back on the wider policy context, so some concrete examples in general uh, of policies that need to go hand in hand, um, and then uh, finishing with uh, some of the ideas uh, for, for the context in Nepal. And um, so this is something that we pulled together with our friends from Mobilize Your City. Um, and there is a little guideline available and some training specifically on the NUMP development. It is basically meant to uh, empower cities to coordinate between the local and the national governments and address some of the key barriers and aiming to harmonize policies and regulations across policy levels. Um, here, of course, it is quite vital that uh, to both sides, or you know, in many cases, there's also a state government in between as well. So all three levels of government that, that are relevant for national, local, and state transport policies and institutions and investment programs um, are at least as aligned as possible. Of course, this becomes very tricky when, for example, different uh, political actors um, are active at the different levels uh, who may not uh, necessarily have the same political agenda. So there, of course, um, a more longer term um, strategic environment can at least uh, create some level of continuity and stability. Um, so the basic idea of what we call an NUMP, but you know, it can have many names. It's just the basic idea that this is a strategic and action-oriented framework for mobility so that we make a direct uh, link between national policy, regulatory, fiscal environments and the implementation at the local level. And uh, particularly important uh, from that perspective is also the enhancement of uh, cap capabilities and capacities at the city level, which goes to the level of uh, um, actors and policies, uh, uh, advisors, planners at the local level who need support. Often, of course, there's quite an imbalance between the capacities that are available in different planning departments, in local authorities, as opposed to national governments. So there, um, in particular, of course, also for the uh, small and medium-sized cities, there is quite a lack of capacities at, at the local level. So ensuring that there is enough staff and enough capacities um, at the local level to develop and implement plans. But then, of course, also uh, uh, empowering uh, local authorities to have sufficient regulatory power and fiscal uh, 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 opportunities to invest in local infrastructure and mobility solutions is an important element. So that's the basic idea of the NUMP. And the way this uh, sort of interlinks between uh, the national and local level we said uh, in, in many cases, there's also a state level in between, um, is that of course, policy and regulations directly affect the ability or not of local governments, for example, to raise funds, for example, to allow to, uh, certain vehicles on the road. Um, there's of course a heavy reliance on national support for uh, investments into local infrastructure. Um, and then of course, in many cases, there's also a deck direct link between local and national 
uh, governments and investments uh, on um, uh, the debt repayment as well. Um, so linking, linking all that uh, is sort of the main idea of an NUMP. And um, of course, there can be different uh, ways to get to such an NUMP. Um, it can be a comprehensive approach where you basically develop a national urban mobility policy as an overarching uh, strategy for the sector to transform um, that has agreed concrete targets across the local and the national level that identifies specifically uh, regulatory policy and uh, financial frameworks um, uh, and links them between the levels of government and uh, uh, then spells out more specifically specific programs on the policy as well as on the investment side um, and uh, outlines uh, individual policies. It can be a patchwork of those. Um, very often that is the case and that can be a starting point. You can start with a more dedicated program toward the uh, boosting uh, the transformation of a bus sector, for example, or a development of a certain segment um, of uh, uh, sustainable mobility or electric mobility development. The key thing is, of course, that it is at least embedded into a wider structure and that over the longer term, you can bring those patchwork elements together to a more comprehensive uh, program and package, because this is what really what we need for the more wider transformation of the sector. And um, some of the key principles uh, are very similar to uh, what we have uh, used for many years also on the local level around the sustainable urban mobility planning, so that we prioritize people and focus on the quality of life that all our actions are embedded into longer term visions with a clear focus and specific targets for the short and medium term. Um, that this is a tool. It's not just a paper that can be written by a consultant. It is for, first and foremost, a process to organize and coordinate actors, their objectives and their responsibilities. Uh, so uh, the coordination of uh, key institutions, we've, we've heard about that um, uh, already in the previous discussions, and this is um, one way of trying to bring this all together. And uh, when you develop a more longer term uh, strategic uh, document, that is also an opportunity to bring in uh, key stakeholders from outside government. Uh, and they are, of course, in, uh, private sector actors uh, from the vehicle industry, from the uh, public sector, uh, from the public uh, transport authorities, from uh, various transit operators and startups, but then also even go beyond and turn this into a participatory process that um, is wide open to public participation. And this can be a key tool to what we said in the beginning around the stability of such a long-term program. Because if there has been a wide participation from well beyond uh, party politics and well beyond the government of the day and one coalition at, at one level of government, um, key stakeholders have brought in, uh, the participation goes into the public and the public likes it and uh, is, is committed to those uh, long-term targets, then you have a level of consensus and con consistency that gives you the longer-term um, uh, stability that you need. And then, of course, uh, you can also link that to international commitments from the state and, and national level as well. Um, uh, who takes action? So obviously there's no surprise here on who, who are key players uh, in that field. It can start with different uh, ministries. And, uh, you know, being uh, an environmental guy, I can probably say that, that the angle purely from the environment perspective or the, from the NDC, from the um, uh, Ministry of the, for the Environment, um, may not necessarily be the strongest as the starting point. So it would be highly desirable that 
Ministry of Transport, a Ministry of Finance, and of course, also, you know, if that sits within the Prime Minister's office or so, that can also be a, a helpful tool to coordinate other players, might be the better step for this wider transition of the sector. Environmental um, uh, aspects are, of course, a key uh, objective here, but access for all, safety, quality of life, uh, efficiency, effectiveness, also industrial development are key driving factors here. And this is where other more powerful um, uh, ministries within cabinet may be better placed to run this process than an environment ministry, for example. So that then you know, would of course include all the other uh, relevant uh, ministries around the, the table, but also civil society actors, academia, and then local governments, of course, and not just um, the big uh, powerhouses, but also the small and medium-sized cities cause the demands for uh, capacities, for their abilities to contribute might be quite different. And um, similar as you know it from the sustainable urban mobility planning, um, in UMP planning can go in, in, in a very similar cycle where you start with the wide mapping of uh, the key issues that need addressing, the key stakeholders need to, that need to be involved, um, and then develop the joint uh, process towards joint visions and goals, and then identify concrete measures that can be uh, implemented or that are implemented already that need to be better synchronized or that need uh, amendments later on in the process. And then you take it from there into a more detailed preparation. And the reason why we need that is, is that the transport sector, as we know, is very scattered with regard to the different angles that you, um, you can uh, influence the sector and uh, drive the transition of the sector. Um, local and national policies uh, are key in that and not either one of them uh, can do it all by themselves. So of course, at the national level, uh, fiscal and regulatory uh, measures such as the taxation and regulation of the vehicle fleet are an important element, but also uh, enabling factors that uh, empower local authorities to raise funds at the local level, to plan, to invest at the local level, all of them go hand in hand. And if we look at the, the case from, um, from Nepal, so that we've heard quite a number of uh, key elements that fit already well into that context that, uh, that one could um, uh, link together to provide a more contextual framework in the context of an NUMP to align regulations, to ensure that there is co-funding for public transport operators, for example, to look into imports and capacity building. And if we look at that more specifically, then um, one could look at um, the existing uh, uh, regulatory and fiscal um, uh, incentives uh, or taxation environment, let's say, in, in Nepal, um, already quite prone to that kind of approach, where there is quite a good differentiation between um, uh, uh, fossil fuel powered vehicles and electric vehicles, um, where there is taken into account into the fuel tax uh, uh, already uh, a pollution element in that. And if you were to bring that together to a hypothecated fund, so that you basically earmark the funds that are being generated through the different treatment of different types of vehicles and use that to reinvest in low carbon modes, but also then in the development of a local industry on e-mobility solutions, um, then Nepal could really become a powerhouse for for e-mobility solutions uh, in South Asia and beyond, uh, in particular with innovative and fit for purpose, energy efficient, resource efficient vehicle concept, such as the Safa Tempo, such as the logistics and two wheeler vehicle concepts that we talked about, electric buses uh, uh, developed locally. So that can be a tool to develop a domestic uh, industry, and that could be a great 
opportunity for Nepal as well. I hope I you know, uh, managed to share a few thoughts on, on a potential framework for, uh, for a national uh, policy uh, that can link local and national elements together. Thank you very much.